Landing the Starship no longer seems to be a difficult task for SpaceX and Elon Musk. Recently, the esteemed CEO once again affirmed the successful and gentle landing of the Booster 11 in the fourth flight and even set a target for the next launch. Starship Booster makes soft landing in water, next landing will be caught by the tower arms. And not only that, SpaceX and Elon Musk have also given us a close-up view of the Super Heavy landing, an event that has piqued curiosity since the Starship's flight after 8 minutes. Let's analyze the intriguing details we can see in this video. What made Super Heavy's splashdown in the sea so awesome? What's the difference between the way SpaceX recovers Starship and the Falcon 9 booster? Let's find out this and more on today's episode of Alpha Tech. The booster's landing footage showed the rocket gliding back towards the water engulfed in a vapor cone before its engines lit up for a landing burn. This burn reduces the rocket speed for a smooth landing and is an essential part of the rocket's landing profile since SpaceX eventually plans to catch it with a launch tower. Before activating the landing engines, the booster was at an altitude of 2 kilometers, flying at a speed of over 1,200 kilometers an hour. However, just 10 seconds later, when the booster hit the water, the speed decreased to only 9 kilometers an hour. Within this very short time frame, the engines demonstrated an excellent capability for deceleration during landing. Yeah, this is a significant improvement compared to the third flight. In that flight, when Booster B-10 was at an altitude of under 1 kilometer, its speed was still over 1,100 kilometers an hour, which was the reason the vehicle could not land. Another noteworthy detail is the burst of flames from the engines. This phenomenon occurred right after the booster ignited 13 Raptor engines to reduce its descent speed. Initially, we can see it wobble slightly, which is because the booster was essentially empty at that point. It had carried 3,400 tons of fuel at liftoff, and the tanks were nearly empty during the landing due to the need to reduce weight. To further decrease the rocket's weight, SpaceX even removed its hot staging. This led to a sudden change in thrust, weight, and inertia, causing the rocket to momentarily lose full control of its body. But just a few seconds later, it stabilized itself. Although one engine failed to reignite, likely causing a small explosion, the Super Heavy still managed to glide gracefully for a visually stunning soft landing. This achievement seems to have fulfilled SpaceX's goal of landing the booster stably at a designated location referred to as a virtual tower. This opened up the possibility of a towering catch on the fifth flight. As of now, it looks like this is very likely to happen if we believe SpaceX director Elon Musk that the next landing will be caught by the tower arms. And it's surprising that the next flight is only a month away. At this point, many people might wonder how SpaceX and Elon Musk plan to catch the Super Heavy booster during the fifth launch, right? And how does this differ from the landing of Falcon 9? Okay, the final landing burn process begins at an altitude of about a thousand meters, much higher than where the Falcon 9 starts its burn. Like Falcon 9, Super Heavy will descend at an angle, resembling a spear. The reason for this is to have more of a surface area when the rocket hits the atmosphere, creating drag or lift. And again, like Falcon 9, Super Heavy will use the grid fins to help stabilize the flight. Super Heavy will then use 13 engines at the start of the landing process, and these engines will be mounted on a gimbal system that allows the engine nozzles to swivel around and control the rocket. At an altitude of around 500 meters, 10 of the engines will then shut down, leaving only three Raptors to control the rocket, and it'll thread the needle between the Mechazilla catching arms. At this point, the tower arms will be moved to the side, away from the launch pad. SpaceX does not want the booster to fall directly on top of the pad because building it is very costly and labor-intensive. The launch pad's relatively inexpensive, but the ground infrastructure costs a ton. At about 65 meters above the ground, the Super Heavy will be hovering, and the chopsticks will move up to grab two pins on either side of the booster, just below the grid fence. This approach is slightly different from the idea depicted in most previous 3D video simulations, where the booster would exert downward force and the arms would then catch and absorb the energy. From the four Starship launch, we can see the booster hover and hover for about three seconds. Through a short time, this is enough for the fifth launch of SpaceX to use that time for the chopsticks to engage. With this approach, the sticks will move very little during the catch, and they certainly won't droop like shock absorbers. We know that the rails on the chopstick arms have the ability to move up and down a few inches, which is likely all that's needed to absorb the weight of the booster, similar to the crush cores on Falcon 9's legs. 
We often see Falcon 9 come down quite hard when landing. This is commonly referred to as a suicide burn, because if it's too short, the rocket will hit hard and blow up. But if it burns too long, the rocket bounces off the ground, flies back up, flips over, and then explodes. We've seen both scenarios happen with Falcons in the past. The reason for this is, first, to use as little fuel as possible, as even hovering for a few seconds it takes a lot of fuel to reserve. And second, an empty Falcon 9 is very light, only about 550 kilograms of mass, while the Merlin engines are very powerful, so they cannot throttle down enough to slow the booster gently. So, can Super Heavy hit such a narrow landing target? Yes, it really won't be a problem. And again, we can compare it to Falcon 9. That booster can land in a very small circle, even on a floating drone ship out in the ocean. When Falcon Booster lands on the ground, they almost always hit the bullseye on the pad. And Falcon 9 can only steer with grid fins. It doesn't have gimbaled engines, and it doesn't have the luxury of hovering. If we look at Blue Origin's New Shepard booster, it can perform some very slow and controlled landings on the ground with fins and hover capability, but still without gimbaled engine control. So, with all the advanced technologies in Super Heavy, the combination of grid fins, gimbaled engines, and hovering ability, it certainly can land precisely as SpaceX aims to do in the fifth launch. The ability to land with this catching tower method will significantly accelerate the launch pace of Starship in the future. In fact, Elon wants to turn around his Starship rockets three times a day, because only then can a Mars city come closer to reality. Indeed, it requires a broad vision to fully harness the ingenuity of human creativity. If Elon Musk didn't have grand ambitions, how could he come up with the idea that catching Super Heavy with a tower could be faster? In the past, the original plan for Super Heavy was to land directly on the launch pad, making it immediately ready for the next flight. Although this would bring many benefits, it would require a much higher level of precision than SpaceX has demonstrated with their Falcon 9 landings. So SpaceX came up with the idea of landing super heavy on a landing pad and using a giant crane to lift it on the launch pad. This required at least six extremely large landing legs with enough shock absorption capability to handle the landing. But here's where the problem arises. Perhaps one of the areas where SpaceX has learned from their Falcon 9 landings is the landing legs. For Falcon 9 landings, the booster needs to be transported back to the refurbishment hangar, where many parts are replaced and inspected. One of the most critical parts during their refurbishment is the landing legs. All this takes a lot of time and is not an option for Super Heavy. Removing the legs entirely from the design not only simplifies the turnaround time, but also saves a ton of weight. That's all for today's episode. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time. Bye.